Every springtime in Antarctica, a population of Weddell seals returns to Erebus Bay in the Ross Sea to give birth and raise their pups. Weddell seals are the southernmost mammal on Earth. Weddell seals are found only in Antarctica. They're a true seal, Phocidae. They're one of the better diving marine mammals in the world. They can hold their breath for over 40 minutes and dive about 2,000 feet. We know them to be a seal that swims back in under the frozen sea ice and they come up through the tide cracks and around here on these, against these islands, we have places where the, the ice is attached to the shoreline. And then out here, the, the tide goes up and down a few feet. It's about a one meter tide, maybe maximum in this area. And the, the seals use that diving ability to get back in here and come out through these tide cracks and exploit this area. Because Weddell seals travel so far under the sea ice where they access the surface, they are able to give birth where there are no natural predators that might prey on their vulnerable new pups. And every year a research team of scientists and graduate students based at Montana State University returns to Antarctica to study these seals. This research project is one of the longest running projects ever done on a long-lived mammal. There aren't a lot of projects done on long-lived species that have a 40-year database. For over 40 years, this project with funding from the National Science Foundation has focused on the population dynamics of these seals and how this population is affected by changes in their environment. There are two major aspects to this research work, gathering data on seals in the field and then analyzing these data using statistical models and methodology to make new discoveries. So there's two fundamental activities in the field season. The first half is focusing in on visiting all the colonies and tagging every pup, or almost every pup, that's accessible, that can be safely accessed, soon after they're born. Then the second half of the study period, we have very standardized surveys where we travel throughout the Erebus Bay, uh, all the colonies, all the sea ice, trying to find every seal that's hauled up in one day. We now know how long they live. We know when they start to have pups. We know how often they have pups. And from that, we assemble an understanding of their life history. How do we tie population dynamics with variability in the food that's in the marine system that's probably driving those population dynamics? Well, since we can't study the prey themselves, we can infer that in years when the conditions are good in, in the raw sea, that produces a lot of food, a lot of fish for the seals, that the seals probably gain more weight that year. And so when they come back to reproduce, on average, they're gonna be bigger than in years where food's relatively scarce in the marine environment. So we can't measure food directly, but we can measure mass as a surrogate. To measure mass, the researchers weigh a select number of seal moms and pups. They also use photogrammetric equipment to calculate the mass of seal moms which can sometimes weigh over 1,200 pounds. As scientists collect data, it's, it's very typical to start to observe patterns in the numbers and in the data. And from that come hypotheses. Ideas about how the world works come from observing the world and sensing patterns in the data. The next step is really to take the data and formally test those ideas. And we do that through a variety of methods. A primary one that we use is statistical analysis, where we put our different ideas up as competing hypotheses or competing ideas, and then we evaluate which ideas are well supported by the data, which are sort of supported by the data, and which are very much not supported by the data. We try to let the data speak, and we do it formally to take ourselves out of that system to make it as an objective evaluation of the competing ideas as we possibly can as scientists. With this long-term information, what is learned about this functioning population of apex predator in this pristine marine environment can be used to better understand and manage other populations of long-lived mammals that are endangered or aren't doing as well. And this can enable us to become better stewards of our planet.